show. Today's episode will be very exciting as I welcome Los Angeles' very own Joseph Foreman, better known as Avro Man. I'm so excited to have you. Yes, good to be here. I'm excited to be here. Grammy nominated American rapper, singer, songwriter, and multi instrumentalist Joseph is known for his songs Because I Got Hot and Crazy Rap, which were featured on his album, The Good Times. He has worked with some of the industry's biggest names, possibly one of the biggest being hip hop legend Snoop Dogg. With his multi decade long career, he continues to perform for his dedicated fan bases with his classic hits. Please, again, welcome, Afro Man. Hey. <laughs> yes, good to be here. To start, not only are you a singer and a rapper, but a multi instrumentalist, like I was saying before. Um, which came first, to playing instruments or performing? And what point did you decide to start making your own music? Um, performing came first. I was, the first thing I remember in life was uh, singing as a little, little, little tiny boy in church. I remember walking down the aisle. And then um, then I started playing the drums. Then I started playing the guitar. And then I got into rapping and I wanted to, um, I love rap music. This girl at my school, she she had real nice clothes. We were, you know, we were in the ghetto, but I went to school and uh, this girl kept picking on me. She had real nice clothes and I had bad clothes, you know, it was oh. in the ghetto. <laughs> and so uh, she had a slight mustache, you know what I'm saying? And uh, all I could do was make up a rap song exaggerating about her mustache to distract <laughs> people about, to distract them from how poor I was. I had, I had everybody looking at her little slight mustache. <laughs> and so... I wrote my own song, uh, a parody from Lottie Dottie, and I wrote Harry Carey. Oh, uh, did she know that actually you wrote it for her? Yes, yes. I... Uh, because, you know, at that time, Lottie Dottie was a big song, Slick okay. Rick. Slick Rick's a big time rapper, and his song was all over. We had a hip hop station in LA, and his song was all over the radio. All the little kids were trying to beat box. We were all trying to. <laughs> and. And um, I wrote my song just like Lottie Dottie. I I used his song for a blueprint for mine. I you know see. what I mean? So when he said Lottie Dottie, I wrote Harry Carey. <laughs> Lottie Dottie, I wrote Harry Carey. Uh, Harry Carey ate her own cherry. And, and those guys, the older men used to joke with you. You know, they say when you give a woman oral sex, it makes your lip hairy. You know what I mean? Did so, you really stop picking on you after the song? Yeah, uh, yes, the whole school went crazy. <laughs> Rapping was a craze in the late 80s. Yeah. The whole school went crazy. And everybody kept making me sing that song over. I was a rap star at that elementary school. As we know, you've been working as an artist, right, in the music industry for decades now, uh, starting in the 90s. What have you seen as some of the... Maybe biggest changes in the industries as a, as a whole, I would say, whatever hip hop specifically or just the nature of releasing music. Uh, both. Um, you know, in the eighties, we had classic rappers. They were classic. You know, like uh, you had Houdini, you had Run DMC. Yes. And and to me, I'm gonna say rapping was classic before the swear and the N word came you know what i'm saying so all the rappers before the swearing and the n-word um the run dmc's the fat boys the houdini's the the uh you know and these rappers may have said a curse word one time in their whole careers or yeah. something or, but it wasn't you know this thing i call it classic rap and i call it boxing and then when the swear and the N word came, I call that kickboxing because there's less rules, you know, it's a little, you know, so I consider those rappers classic rappers. So when when the rap came to the West Coast, you know, what I'm saying uh, it became, you know, kickboxing like, you know, the rapper became confused with his identity. He didn't know if he was a musician or a gang member <laughs> or or a dope dealer, you know, like a rapper had his own look. 
a rapper looked like a rapper. He he yeah. wore a Kango. He wore a Kango. He wore a sweatsuit. He had necklaces. He had, uh, you know, tennis shoes. He had a radio. He, he rode in a limo and he had groupies for women. He was his own person. Yes. Uh, but then the gang members started rapping. You know, the N.W.A. came and and now rappers had to be thugs. And then, you know, and and, and, and there's always a twist. And then when w one form is successful, then the industry mimics it. Uh, cats used to be original. They used to. You know, the fat boys was the fat boys, but nobody else tried to get fat so they could be, you know, the fat boys cousins or something like that, you know, as a marketing strategy or whatever. But, yeah, it it, it has changed. And um, uh, I noticed how rappers don't really rhyme no more. They they just anything is OK. You know, back in the 80s, you know, if you said which, then you had to say ditch. Okay. You know, <laughs> you know, and um, um, am I allowed to swear, for example? You are. Yeah. Like uh, rappers get away with they think this is poetry now. They'll say bitch and then they'll try to run with shit. Yeah. And that's cheating to me. That's selling me more baking soda than cocaine. You know what I mean? That's uh, you're cheating. You're giving me more ice than soda. You know, more air. You're giving me more air than potato chips. You know, you're supposed to rhyme. Rhyming is what distinguishes a rapper from a civilian talking. I agree. But, um, Especially freestyle, right? Where you, of course, have to do all the rhymes I see nowadays. I mean, a lot of rappers that are famous uh, nowadays, maybe they they don't do it, of course, as much. You know, I actually tried with some in my show and you ask them, you know, would you like to rap? And I'll say, no. And I'm like, you should be happy, you know, to do it. It should be your thing, you know? Like, I'm excited to yes. do this with you because this is my thing. So I believe that maybe, uh, you know, or at least I hope that that will come back, you know, that will they will just be excited, you know, to uh, do freestyle and to, you know, run. Right on, right on. So what is your professional opinion on the um, dispersion of power uh, the industry has recently seen, you know, regarding maybe the level of control the labels have all over the industry today? Um, you know, I don't know. Um, I, I think what I don't like is um, I think we need to bring back the cassette. Mm, please. Yes. Yeah. Um, I think music died with the cassette um, because CDs were good. We loved the idea of them. What if my girl came on and said, I got we never heard my girl. You know what I mean? Yeah. I have movies I have never seen the end to because the DVD just won't play it. And how many DVDs do I have to go buy before it plays it? And then I should be able to see the movie all the way through each time I watch it. The last time the world got entertained, it was by the VHS and the cassette. I miss those times tremendously. The, the, the cassette gave you the entire musical experience. Yes. A rapper could make a skit that led up to his song, mm -hmm. and the skit would help you understand the song more appreciate the song and then you would get into the song more mm -hmm. and then that song would set you up for the next song and the and the and then the skits in between get you all ready and next thing you know album is 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 almost better than a whole movie yes matter of fact albums musical albums used to be better than movies because i could play this album for months mm -hmm. I remember I used to buy I used to buy an album and I digested. Sometimes it took me a year to really just take it, take it in. And I was happy about it because I always had something good to look forward to. Yes. That's mm -hmm. also maybe a big difference that I think I 
see nowadays a lot of people they just do one single and that's it right <clears throat> so people don't do albums as much as they used to and i think that that is also something that we should go back to so as the world knows your hit uh, because i got high by the way my husband used to sing to that to me so many times so uh, that is one of my favorite it has also uh, been mentioned that you found different perspectives uh, over the years on your uh, previous lyrics about marijuana use, especially after having children. Um, so I want to ask, could you walk us through this a bit and tell us what are your thoughts on cannabis use today, especially maybe with the, the rise, right, in the commercial industry? I didn't realize it, it did so many good things uh, medically and everything. So I was having fun with my first song. It's so easy to catch flack for something somebody can you can make like the nicest like carefree song and somebody will find something yeah. offensive about it they recalled a christmas song the other time i think it's something about like uh why don't you stay or something they thought that song was sexually harassing and oh it's like some it's like some uh it's like uh they they, they took it off the air like radio stations started banning it and all kind of stuff you know what i'm saying <laughs> really uh, yeah so you know because i got high I didn't realize that me singing it like the original way I sung it could possibly insult the intelligent stoner. Oh. <laughs> okay. Cause they, you know, cause they, 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 you know, I, I'm insulting them by saying, Hey, you know, uh, you know, I can't get stuff done because I got medicated. They're like, no, you're full of, you're full of crap. You can't. Yeah. And, and I was just talking about my personal story. I, I was mesmerized and I, I I'm a natural procrastinator. So, you know, the entertainment really helps distract me from, you know, okay. but I'm not saying that every other person is like me, you know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, I wanted to write a song that wouldn't insult the stoners intelligence, you know what I'm saying? A, a redeeming song. You know, everybody likes that song. Every now and then I run into a couple of people that goes, you know, I got high and I cleaned my room. <laughs> 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 and I was just having fun, you know. But uh, yeah, so this song, it highlights all of the positive stuff marijuana's doing. Had problems with glaucoma. Then I got high. Yeah. Um, smell the cannabis aroma. I got high. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, it goes on and on, you know what I'm saying? And, talks about how the taxes for marijuana is helping build schools and this and that and that and this. So this next song is, I call it the positive remix because it focuses on the positive things that marijuana has done. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I actually use um, you know, medical marijuana and um, it helps tremendously with migraines, also with anxiety, with so many problems. It's just in incredible. So it can really help for so many things, people. And it's, I actually am very happy that finally after, you know, so many years of battling, you know, now it's finally available to, you know, a lot of people. So I'm happy. <laughs> so Leslie, as someone that has built uh, their career off of a few, you know, huge hits, what is your advice to someone uh, today, maybe who blew up after uh, an unfamed uh, song or single hit? How can they keep growing in your view? Go where they're appreciated. Uh, patronize the patronizers. You know, secure their names and all of their domains. Mm -hmm. You know, little kids out there, they like to steal your name, you little badass kids out there. You know what I'm saying? Um, secure all their, their social media sites. Yes. And, um, you know, I, I, you know, I got, I got one hit and this hit has been paying the bills for like 20 years. I got, I got a bunch of hits. But I got one major hit that opens the doors for everything. Yes. I can use it for anything. I can be like, hi, Afro man, because I got high. <laughs> All right. <laughs> now, let's talk about, let's talk about, you know, it, it opens the door for everything. So it's like, um, yeah, um, don't be annoyed by your one hit. You know, people say, hey, you're a one hit wonder. And I say, how many hits do you need? Right. <laughs> so, you know, uh, God bless the 20 hit haver. You know, actually, I got 28 hits. 
I was counting all my hits. I got 28 hits, but I only get credit for like two of them. But two? You know, yeah. But, but still, of course, keep on working on your albums. One thing I like about being a musician, it's not over till you're dead. You know what I'm saying? If Definitely. you're a basketball player, it might be over when you're 40 Definitely. or, you know, 38, 37. But when you, I've seen B.B. King played, he played till he was 100 years old and fell off his stool on the stage. Like he yes. played till it was over. You know what I'm saying? So uh, if you're a musician, it's not over until you're dead. No, maybe we can expect a new hit from you. It might come, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> until I die, until I die, Every day you wake up, you better watch out. Yeah. Boy, Afro man, yeah. boy, boy, hey. Afro man, he'll stick with him. Afro is coming with a new hit. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for this. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. And I hope we're going to meet uh, in person. Maybe soon. Yes. Yes, I hope so, too. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you.